Matrixes might be one of the most important visual tools in Power BI. Stakeholders love them because they show data in a way that's really familiar for most people. They're very similar to pivot tables in Microsoft Excel, but sometimes they can feel a little bit basic. So I'm going to show you three different techniques on how to upgrade your matrixes. The three techniques I'm going to show you is how to use field parameters to select what column you'd like to show. So now that I have three different columns, I've got column segmented product, and I can select to show the data by a specific column or by a combination of columns that I would like to choose, such as country and product skipping over segment. Using field, field parameters, I can also dynamically select what column I'd like to search. So right now I'm searching for Canada, 24.89 million sales. But if I wanted to search for a segment, for example, I can do that and I can just search a segment within Canada. So I'm searching for the mid market. And this is pretty cool because you can dynamically select what column you'd like to search for. But also with the previous technique, you can actually show data that is going to only show the data that has been filtered by your search bar. And finally, what, what I'd like to show you is automatic display formatting. Now, auto, display formatting doesn't exist in an automatic way in matrices. What it usually looks like when you're throwing data into a uh, matrix looks a little bit like this, where nothing is really formatted. And you do have the opportunity to set specific columns to show a specific display unit, thousands, millions, billions, trillions. But it's hard to get to a point where when you open up data, if you have million for a specific column at this level, when it's going lower and lower, it's going to show very, very small values and it's not going to look great. So using automatic uh, display formatting, you can actually show to the level of the data and not to the level that you not to a static level that is enforced by the matrix. So for the first technique, we're going to create selectable columns. To do this, we're going to use field parameters. And to make field parameters, all you need to do is go to the modeling tab and click new parameter. So I'm going to click new parameter and select fields. And that's going to allow me to create a new field parameter. You can change the name of the parameter to whatever you want. Let's call it columns. And what is it? Well, in this data set that I'm using, I put in what's it now? Country, segment, and product. So that's great. If you want, you can, you know, to change the name of actual columns here. So I could call this country version one, or it could be something else, depending on what you actually want it to be called. It's fine. I'm going to, you know, to create this, and what it's going to look like is it's going to create a table and it automatically puts in a slicer. So what I've done, is I have in this columns. And if you open up this table, it actually, you know, it's like has a specific column with the same name as the table. And if you select it, you can see that it's uh, basically referencing specific values in a different table. Now the table that I'm using the financial table data, which is if you see a completely new report and you click try sample data sets, load sample data, that's the financial data. So by clicking on a specific table, this is data that comes with Power BI straight out of the box. So you can always use this if you really want to, to like test some things. If you want to do the things that I'm doing exactly, you'll be able to just load data exactly like how I'm doing right now. And you'll have the same table in your own data set. So from the financial table, I have used three different columns to make this field parameter. And I can use this field parameter in a specific table. Now, this is the actual field parameter that I created earlier. It's just called something different, but you can see it's exactly the same. And what I've done is I have made that slicer that uh, popped up. I have create, made it into a tile. I have uh, the header. And so you can see country, segment, and product. Now, the key here is in the actual matrix itself, instead of putting country, um, segments, and product as different values in your you know, matrix, just throw in the field parameter, and that will actually work in exactly the same way as if you had country, segment, and product in your data set. 
but now with the slicer you can select country and it'll only show country you can select product and it'll only show product or you can select any combination for example country and then select product and open up you know it's like canada into you know it's like uh, country into product this is pretty cool but did you know you can also do this the other way so if i unselect everything and i select product and then country so this is a little bit different from the out of box uh functionality that the matrix provides and it, the matrix provides something you know it's like similar but the possibility of just switching the order is something that you can only achieve by this technique the second technique i want to show you today is the dynamic text search and basically what it's using is a custom visualization called the text filter you can get it by clicking on the get more visuals from the visualizations pane and it's honestly in the top row second top row text filter from the microsoft corporation and basically what it allows you to do is have a more app-like feeling where you have a really nice search bar uh, simply add it to your power bi and you're going to be able to use it to search your matrix basically what i've done is i've taken the exact same field parameter that i we created before and i've done i've added two things one is a slicer and one the text filter so the text filter has the same parameter but the slicer also has that same parameter now this is where it gets a little bit interesting to make this work properly what you're going to have to do is to go to format once you have the slicer selected click edit interactions and make sure that this slicer is only affecting the text filter it shouldn't affect the other slicer which is directly affecting the table and it also shouldn't affect the table uh, because if you are uh, affecting either of these then uh, you know it's like only one item will be selected so let me just show you if this filter is actually uh, altering this filter as well you'll see that by selecting something like country it, it messes everything up it's that's not how it's supposed to work so this filter which has the parameter names is only supposed to filter the text filter and this text filter is also not supposed to filter either of these other parameter slicers a little bit confusing but you'll see why in just a second this text filter um, alters this matrix and nothing else this filter alters this text filter and nothing else and this right here doesn't alter either one of these and only alters the matrix and if that is the case then you can have a specific interaction where i can select any item here and this will affect only the, what i am searching so let me make that a little bit clearer right now if i turn the title on you can see that th by selecting country the search is actually pointing towards the country column if I select segment, it's pointing towards the segment column. And if I'm selecting product, it's searching the product column. And this makes absolute sense to me. But if I have everything here and I expand everything down, let's say I want to search for a specific product, let's say BTT. And that works really nicely. And the fact that it works in such a way where I can select a specific segment a specific country and it's still only showing vtt products is really really fantastic so it, it's a really nice you know it's a way of navigating your data which is not something that comes out of the box you can of course just have slicers and there's a way to have a uh, search in individual column slicers but it's impossible to do dynamic uh selection of what column you want to search unless you're using this technique. So for the third technique, I'm gonna show you how you can have auto display units in the matrix. Let's move to the matrix. And I think I gotta move myself a little bit over here. Okay, maybe I'll move myself over here for this one. Display units in the matrix are a little bit complicated. Basically, if you select a matrix and I unselect the formatting, you can see that I have no display units set on any of the columns. 
But if I want to set display units on a specific column, what I need to do is I need to go to the format visual in my visualizations pane. I'm going to go to a specific column. I'm sorry, not values to a specific column. And right now I have sales selected. And here I have the option of setting the display units to trillions, billions, millions, or thousands. So let's select, uh, for example, billions. Maybe that's a little bit too much, but uh, if I select millions, for example, it looks okay. But if I expand the data farther and farther down, it becomes harder and harder to see what level of data I'm actually looking at. Now, let's say, for just for the sake of argument, that I do select billions as the display units. If I've uh, opened up the matrix uh, to a very low granularity, I can no longer see what the values are. So that poses honestly a pretty big problem and it doesn't display units in the matrix really doesn't work if it's not going to show you the data that you actually want to see that being the case it's a little bit tricky to you know to uh, do but uh what i suggest is to use calculation groups in order to make display units automatic in within your matrix and the way that we're going to do this is first we're going to go to external tools and you're going to need to open your tabular editor. I really recommend, uh, you know, it's like getting this tabular editor. There is a free version, is, which is what I'm using here. And there is a paid version. The paid version is much better. But for the purposes of this video, I'm using the free version, which is tabular editor version 2, which you'll be able to download in the link in the description. So what I do is I simply open up that tabular editor and if I right click on tables, I can create new and it's an option here to create a new calculated table. So I can click on calculated table, but the actual option I want that I want is calculation group. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to call this new calculation group. I guess yeah, that's fine. And if I open up the calculation group, I can right click on it and click on new calculation item. Let's call this. Um, calculation item i guess that's fine so if i'm if i've got the calculation item open i can uh you know it's like write a little bit of code here and that's going to allow me to create a filter to use on matrices to give them automatic display units now if i save this if, uh, so you can save this by going to file and save or hitting control s if i save this the calculation unit will only show on the power bi report if you refresh if you click this button hit and hit refresh now and the way that it shows up is there will be a new table called calculation group and you can see that it has a column this is the column that you're going to want to throw into your slicer or into your filters in order to make the calculation group work we're going to go back to tabular editor and we're not going to mess with this one right now because i've already created the calculation group that i am using it's uh, I've called the table labels. I've called the calculation item formatting, and this is what it looks like. In the expression itself, it seems very simple. It's uh, simply the function selected measure. This measure is something that you can only use in calculation groups, and it references the uh, the value, you know, the actual measure that you are, you know, it's like uh, filtering when you're using the calculation group to filter a specific visual. This isn't where the display units are being automated. You have to actually click on the property dropdown and click on format string expression. And this will take you to another space where you can write a little bit of code. This code is something you might have seen before if you follow my other videos, but it works in this scenario as well. What it does is it takes the selected measure, assuming that it's an, uh, a number, it converts it into an integer to get rid of decimal places, and then converts that into a string in order to use the length function to count how many numbers there are in that, you know, it's like value. If it doesn't work or it's not a number, it'll just count it as zero. But for example, if you have this number, the way that it, this function would work is it would count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the number of digits within the value would be eight. 
Once it has the number of digits within a specific value, what it's going to do is it's going to test if it's more or equal to 13. If it's more or equal to 13, then it's going to recognize that it can be uh, a trillion value. If it's uh, and if it's, you know, it's like less than 13, it'll see if it's equal to or greater than 10, then it'll recognize it as a billion value and so on and so forth. So for seven, it's million, for four, it's thousands. And if it's less than four, it'll just count it as a regular number. This text right here, is with the actual format string that is going to be sent through the calculation group into the measure and you know it's like depending on how long the value is it's going to send different formatting strings to change the value into different display units god that's a mouthful okay so we're going to go back to the power bi and basically what you're going to see is that this here is a filter that i've created I mean a slicer and it basically takes the calculation group and the column from the calculation group and throws it in in the calculation group it's only got formatting which is the name of the calculation item that i created and by filtering this on the you know it's like on the page and thereby the table it changes all of the values in the table into this specific format string because it's a calculation group and the format string measure is dynamic it doesn't matter whether or not the value is in millions or in thousands or uh, whatever you actually, you know, it's like uh, want. It will always be able to find the appropriate display unit and make sure your data looks as neat as possible. So let's have a little bit of a disclaimer. Calculation groups are great, but calculation groups, if you use them, don't allow you to use implicit measures in your Power BI. What are implicit measures and why are they important? Well, implicit measures are basically if you've ever used Power BI and you've taken a column and just thrown it into the values field of any visual, basically that's going to be an implicit measure. It's not a measure that you've actually created. Uh, it's not something that has a clearly defined aggregation. It's called implicit because you didn't actually make the measure. But what would happen if you created a calculation group where you're using a lot of implicit measures? They'd all basically stop working and you would need to create measures for every single, you know, it's like one to make sure that you are actually able to use those values. This calculation group, as with all calculation groups, do not work unless there is a measure. It, it's simply because you're calling a specific measure with the selected measure function, and that doesn't work on the implicit measures. So be warned. And if you want to be able to make all of your implicit measures very quickly in basically a however many you want in the under 10 minutes, go check out my other video where I do exactly that and I create a thousand measures in under 10 minutes. So those were my three techniques for upgrading your matrices to the next level. I hope you learned something today and thanks for watching. Take care.